And Nintendo really said, oh, you're enjoying Tears of the Kingdom right now? Erm, how about you come and look at Splatoon 3 again, okay? And then punched us with a massive amount of content. Hi. I cannot believe we're eating so good this summer. Humpback Pump Track is coming home for the sizzle season, and I I'm so happy. I love this map in Splatoon 2. It's a great map for Turf War, since you can run around in circles to hoard points like there's no tomorrow. And this is just one of the few things that's coming right at the end of May. Trust me when I say you'll want to grind your coin tickets here if you've never tried it before. It's how I got a lot of cash for gear in the early days of Splatoon 2. And since we already know we're getting plenty of new gear every single season, why not try to get that cash as efficiently as possible? Don't be scared. Pull out the Junior, or the Sploosh, or the Aero Spray, and go wild on it. The most goofy mode on this map in Splatoon 2 was tower control due to the weird path the tower took, so hopefully they've made it a little easier to defend that last part of the push. There's also one other map coming with Sizzle Season. It's... it's flat? It gives me... Albacore vibes a little bit? The new map, aka Barnacle and Dime. Get it? They're gonna nickel and dime you. You're at the mall. <laughs> you know, though, the thing about it is even though it is flat, there's a lot of little teeny tiny walls that you could hide behind and do stuff on, and it seems to have a little bit more nuance than just being a big flat Tetris piece. Although, just, just don't look at the map from the top down because um it does have that shape but but at least they're trying to mix it up fingers crossed they keep going in this direction with the maps we'll only know when it's actually added to the game if all the modes work on it or not i'm kind of curious also where they'll put the zones on this map can it be another double zone map or are they just gonna chuck it in the middle Speaking of new maps, we're also getting a new Salmon Run map, which is really ironic given I just got my hands on my last 400 VP badge. Looks like I gotta get another one. <laughs> this map is quite unlike the other ones that we have. Also, what's gonna happen when it's high tide? How much space are we gonna have? It's, it's really flat. It looks evil. I'm excited to see what kind of nightmare we're about to deal with here. What if when it goes to low tide, we randomly have like more cover than otherwise? That'd be kind of cool. What isn't a nightmare is the fact that Nintendo is still giving us brand new weapons for the first time since Splatoon 1, you know, almost eight years ago at this point, and it will be eight years by the time that the sizzle season comes out. We're finally extending the brush class with the pain brush. It, it, it's a ridiculous name. I would like to bump the dev that, that picked that name. That's a good one. It definitely plays somewhere between like a classic brush and a Splatana at a first glance. Obviously without the Splatana hold charge swipe effect thing. The forward momentum of each swing makes it a fair bit different than how the current brushes in the game operate, and I'm curious how it'll fit into some modes. It would be able to defend itself on tower control probably better than current brush class weapons, at least from afar, since its fire is more forward concentrated. I wonder if it'll pop the Rainmaker shields well or not? Nintendo has had a problem with making object damage too low on a lot of the brand new weapons, but hopefully they're learning. I was really tired when I first saw the pain brush, and kind of thought it was a spin-off of a Nautilus. It's the way that the handle shines, but no, no it's not. There's also a brand new blaster! It's the first blaster that we've seen since the Clash blaster that isn't, like, you know, an, an extra kit. I still remember the old days before Clash Blaster came out, where people thought it would be a top tier because of its high fire rate. Well, this S-Blast 92 is a completely different beast. It's also literally just a super scope. The few seconds of gameplay show that it seems to fire at different ranges dependent on if you're jumping or not. It'll encourage players to play a little bit differently, to stand grounded when holding a position, and to be careful to not overdo their movements when in a firefight. If the long-range blast paints pretty well, you could provide great help for your teammates without having to get dangerously close to a fight. Also, when you like spawn in for the first time, why not use a long-range blast first before taking your swim just to help you and your teammates out? And on top of that, we're getting at least 9 new weapon kits? Hi? The weapons getting new kits are the Tent Umbrella, the H3 Nozzle Nose, the Splatana Wiper, the Tetra Dooleys, the Rapid Blaster Pro, the Dooley Squelchers, the heavy splatling, yay! And surprisingly, the big swig roller? And the splattershot nova? Hi? I made a tweet just saying like, oh man, can't wait till we get that 52 deco kit. And um, 
Um, I was I was not right about I was not right about that one. They actually evaded giving new kits to most of the guns. The only gun here getting a new kit is the H3 Nozzlenose. Oh wait, scratch that. Nova's here too. This means we'll be getting alternate kits for Lee's weapons, which came out after the game came out, prior to stuff like the Reflux and especially the Tri-Stringer, which was the flagship weapon of this game. I guess they're saving a big reveal for the one-year anniversary. And just when you think the dev team can't pull a silly surprise out of their pockets, we have the new challenge mode, which, which goes so hard. Will, will we be able to play them in private battles? If not, can they at least be 24-7? It's important to make this as accessible as possible so players can enjoy it together and the mode can be successful. I'm going to assume it's going to be set up similarly to Anarchy Open, where ideally you can play alone or with a group. The challenge icon also matches the color scheme of old League battles, but I don't think it's replacing League. I'm pretty sure it's its own separate thing. I believe people will enjoy the mode more if you can queue in for silly, different from usual matches whenever you want. Of course, pools will still exist to fix that problem if you can't queue in by yourself, but I feel like that will lead to the same thing that happened with extra work, where some people weren't able to enjoy the mode to the fullest because they didn't want to use a pool or didn't know which pools to join. For anyone listening, if you want to play with people, just put in the pool challenge, and I'm sure that will help fix the problem. The other question is how many different modes will be available and how often will they be available? I'd love to see too many the I'd love to see the too many trizuka idea extended to a variety of different specials. Bring on the eight wave breakers. <laughs> I could finally learn how to play Zipcaster appropriately if it's my only option. And the fact that the other modes mess with the game engine itself? Oh man. And I'm not even talking about the cool fog mode. I'm talking about the low gravity mode. Although I will say, when I saw the fog, my first thought was, oh, oh, we're, we're having big run on Hammerhead Bridge. Oh, and then I realized, wait, no, this is, this is just a completely different mode. <laughs> There's so many things they could do if they're willing to mess with our characters like that. Maximum run speed for everybody. It would be so funny. Minimum speed for people. Uh, make people move like they're all playing a heavy weapon, like Explo or e It would be great. Rounds where your sub-weapons have double the range to really let you throw those bombs? To truly let sprinklers go to places they never were meant to be? To throw a wall so far that you're able to defend your teammate without having to get too close? It would be so fun! And they also showcase the ability for you and your friends to like fist bump at the end of a match now, which is really cute. Not sure if it's gonna be locked to challenge or not, or if it's only for the players in the middle of the team, but maybe it can be customized? Maybe it's like specifically a thing you have to attach? Maybe it's random! Who knows? I can already see players trying to queue into a group just right to set up cute fist bumps between each other. <laughs> The sizzle season shows just how much Nintendo wants to do for this game. With brand new weapons, completely off the wall ideas, and plenty more still to come I'm sure, I think the next year of Splatoon 3's updates will continue to be strong. After all, after this, we still have at least five major content updates. This is only the third one. We had one at the end of the first season, the end of the second season, and now we're gonna have one at the end of the third season. Who knows where this game will be by next year? One thing's for sure, and it's that I'll be here to see what happens. <laughs> Thanks for watching, and let me know in the comments what excites you the most about Sizzle Season. Don't forget that the last week of this season will have boosted experience so you can help finish your catalog for the fresh season. Have a good one! Boat, 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 boat. Can't paint that one like Manta.